does the Bible teach us about how we are saved? Now, the very important thing we have to keep in mind is that there are two basic components of salvation. I want to remind us of that before we go into new material. First, we have to keep in mind Jesus Christ is the Savior. And we're saved through Him. And uh, by His name we're saved. By Him. But when you say by His name, it's not just saying the name that does it. There are a lot of people who blaspheme the name of Jesus and they're not doing, doing so well and getting saved by doing that. You know, using our Lord Jesus' name in vain, um, mm -mm, that's not a good idea. So don't just say the name in, in vain and think you're going to be saved because you might find the opposite going on. So you don't want to do that. But, on, uh, but it's Christ himself that is the Savior. And why? Two elements. One, he is truly God. That's the first step. He is God the Word. The infinite Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. We see that in John chapter 1, in the Gospel of St. John. And therefore, because He is infinite God, He is unlimited in His power to save sinners. There is no sin bigger than He is. And we keep that very much in mind. If He were not the infinite Savior... He couldn't, and also eternal one, how could he save people all the way back in time and all the way future in time and all the sins of the whole world? He needs to be infinite. An infinite God is the only one who can do that. Secondly, he is at the same time truly human. He didn't look like a human being. He didn't play games at acting like human. It really wasn't. No, he truly became flesh. That's what we see in John's Gospel again. Same chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So um, this is very important. In Greek mythology and other mythologies, the gods would take a human shape for a time and then quickly go right back to their old form. And when they took human shape, they always did it to do mischief to people. They did all sorts of mischief. And Jesus Christ became a man with a fully human body, human soul, mind, uh, intellect, and human will. You know, the, the, that's, that's fully uh, 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 all that's in, involved in being human without in any way ceasing to be God or having sort of a mixture. You know, sometimes when I was a little kid, I would take crayons and say, let's see if we make a new color if you melt some of the crayons together. Well, you ended up with purplish gray. <laughs> it was not a new color, it was an ugly color. So don't do that. Don't melt the crayons. As my mother told me. Too late. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but God doesn't have, it's not just sort of melting and mixing the thing. It's truly God and truly human. Um, and as such, he is able to be the saving mediator between God and the human race. He was able to be that one mediator. That's why St. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, There is one God. We say that in the Creed, do we not? We believe in one God. So there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It's the only one. 